Is a Pixar slump over? Could the summer be back on track? Has everyone finally forgotten Lightyear? Here's why Inside Out 2 exceeded all expectations at the global box office. When The Fall Guy kicked off summer 2024, it enjoyed an opening weekend audience that was 54% male. Nearly half the audience may have been women, but it was still unusual for a romantic comedy to bring in more men than women. Three weeks later, Furiosa opened in theaters everywhere. Despite having a female lead and following up a beloved classic with widespread appeal, only 28% of that movie's opening weekend was women. Debuting between the two was Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, which had a 60% male audience on its opening weekend. These three titles reflect the reality that summer 2024, before Inside Out 2, was largely appealing to just dudes. Men stop! Yeah, 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 men stop! stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was flipped upside down with Inside Out 2, however, as women comprised 62% of the movie's opening weekend audience. With women in the minority for other summer releases, Inside Out 2 seemed to especially resonate with a demographic woefully undeserved this season. It's also not like the surplus of female moviegoers alienated men from coming to the theater either, with 38% of its opening weekend ticket sales coming from the guys. Inside Out 2 grossed just under $60 million from male moviegoers, more than double the opening weekend of Furiosa. Much like Barbie had dominated the summer box office in 2023, the summer of 24 seems to have been saved by a blockbuster skewing more towards women. Pixar movies released in June have often entered a competitive marketplace for animated family fair. In 2012, for instance, Brave debuted just two weeks after Madagascar 3, Europe's Most Wanted. Cars 3, meanwhile, opened in theaters two weeks after Captain Underpants, the first epic movie in 2017. Then there's a classic example of Wall-E premiering just three weeks after Kung Fu Panda skadooshed audiences everywhere in 2008. Summer is a prime spot to launch kid-friendly movies, of course, which means Pixar titles debuting in June are rarely without company. That was certainly not the case in June 2024, however. The only major animated movie released in the three months before Inside Out 2 was the Garfield movie. While that movie will turn a profit based on worldwide grosses, it hasn't come close to cracking $100 million domestically. This scarcity has ensured that Inside Out 2 could fill a gap in the marketplace and feel extra special to audiences. Essentially, Inside Out 2 has enjoyed a wide open theatrical landscape, which no doubt paved the way for its massive overperformance. <laughs> Sequels tend to make money, that's pretty much the main reason why Hollywood makes them so often, and Pixar sequels, save for one or two notable exceptions, are pretty much foolproof at the box office. From 2010 to 2019, Pixar released four different sequels that each made $415 million or more domestically. Even lower-grossing follow-ups, such as Monsters University, cleared $260 million domestically. Two of these sequels, Finding Dory and Incredibles 2, set box office records at the time of their release. These aren't the usual supersized sequel box office hauls either. Pixar follow-ups are especially sturdy financially, and Inside Out 2 has continued that trend in style. It's not hard to see why Pixar sequels get an extra big box office boost. Such franchise titles are following beloved classics. A far cry from the flash-in-the-pan hits of the studio's competition, all that goodwill inevitably makes people stoked to return to the worlds of Pixar. Meanwhile, the amount of time that it takes to make new installments in Pixar franchises makes these sequels feel more like special events. New entries don't drop on an annual or biannual basis, essentially negating any chance of Pixar fatigue and instead allowing audience anticipation to heighten. Inside Out 2 may have surpassed all pre-release expectations, but the gargantuan box office halls of Finding Dory and Incredibles 2 should have prepared us for this outcome. Even though Pixar sequels tend to sweep the box office, that doesn't mean every follow-up from the studio breaks the bank. After all, each Cars installment made less than the last one domestically. It seems that you need a beloved original movie to score Incredibles 2 box office numbers, and Inside Out 2 certainly had that at its back. The first Inside Out garnered an A Cinema score from audiences over its opening weekend in June 2015, an indicator of the great word of mouth that propelled this title to a successful summertime box office run. After doing more than four times its opening weekend gross in North America, the film also went on to win the Oscar for Best Animated Feature. I won first place! Me too! Oh, participation award. The pop culture accomplishments of Inside Out continued well beyond its first 12 months, too. 
The movie inspired academic essays, internet memes, and was later referenced in a number of TV shows and movies. It appears that the original Inside Out struck a chord with audiences well beyond its initial theatrical run, building the groundwork for Inside Out 2 to build on. One of the more intriguing statistics from the domestic opening weekend of Inside Out 2 was the fact that 36% of the movie's audience in North America was Hispanic and Latino. That demographic was the largest racial market for the film in the region, significantly outpacing Caucasian moviegoers. This impressive feat is one of many instances in recent decades of Hispanic and Latino audiences playing a key part in major box office successes. As early as 1999, blockbusters such as The Mummy reportedly exceeded expectations because they attracted more Hispanic moviegoers than expected. Back in 2013, this demographic moved the needle to the box office performance of nearly every major release that year. No wonder the Los Angeles Times ran an early June 2024 piece declaring that black and Latino audiences could save Hollywood. Unfortunately, Hollywood has often struggled to properly respond to this reality. Representation of Latino characters in modern cinema has barely increased from years past, and studies have shown that the film industry is harming itself in the long term by repeatedly refusing to cater to such a vital demographic. This truth now looms larger than ever after Inside Out 2 left pre-release box office expectations in the dust, in part by attracting more Hispanic and Latino moviegoers than expected. It seems that this is just the latest smash hit to remind studios of the power of America's most dedicated moviegoers. Hello, everybody! <laughs> In recent years, anxiety disorders have become more and more common among adults and children. How could they not? The world seems to have been constantly in peril in the 2020s. The COVID-19 pandemic, relentless political unrest, and other existential woes with seemingly no solution can make one feel helpless and despondent. Anxiety is difficult to grapple with, but it did at least give Inside Out 2 a deeply relatable element, which no doubt paid dividends during the movie's marketing campaign. Newbie character Anxiety instantly connected with people in the Inside Out 2 promotional materials as a physical manifestation of a sensation that so many people have dealt with. The marketing of Inside Out 2 promised, among other things, a colorful, upbeat movie that might also tackle people's bottled-up experiences with anxiety. Moviegoers might not feel so alone seeing fictional characters navigate the horrors of anxiety, but keeping things PG-rated meant it wouldn't seem too daunting for people to watch. That delicate balance between reliability and escapism made Inside Out 2 a hugely attractive movie for many moviegoers. In years to come, Inside Out 2 may receive much of the credit for reviving Pixar's box office reputation. But let's not forget the role Elemental played in paving the way for the Inside Out sequel's success. That effort was only the second Pixar title to get a traditional theatrical release after the pandemic struck in March 2020. But Elemental's disastrous opening weekend, combined with Lightyear tanking in 2022, initially suggested that Pixar might be down for the count. Tossing acclaimed titles such as Soul and Turning Red onto Disney Plus had apparently caused serious damage to the studio, and it seemed for a while it may never return to its pre-pandemic glory. But then a funny thing happened. Elemental just kept going at the box office, and going, and going. The movie demonstrated hugely impressive legs that took it to just over $54 million domestically and an impressive $484 million worldwide. Admittedly, Inside Out 2 surpassed Elemental's lifetime domestic haul after just three days of release, but the latter film's leggy theatrical run offered a much-needed rebound for Pixar's reputation. Its strong word of mouth reminded people that Pixar movies weren't just built for streaming and that maybe it was worth seeing these movies in theaters after all. Elemental's astonishing box office run broke all the rules for how movies are supposed to perform in theaters, and that feat undoubtedly played a part in getting audiences excited to see Inside Out 2 on the big screen. Save for the occasional exception, the biggest summer movies in history have tended to be more upbeat releases. Furiosa, Kingdom of the Planets of the Apes, and even, to an extent, The Fall Guy didn't always strike the right chord for moviegoers looking for traditional summertime escapism. With that lack of upbeat new movies, the summer box office inevitably struggled. I'm too sad to walk. Just give me a few hours. Inside Out 2, meanwhile, was the complete opposite. 
Posters and trailers showcase vibrantly colorful emotions, occupying every color of the rainbow. Even more ominous emotions, such as anxiety and embarrassment, appear in hues of orange and pink. And the movie is very much a comedy, too. Filled with slapstick laughs, one-liners, and cheeky in-jokes, even with the promise of that classic Pixar pathos, Inside Out 2 is promised as exactly the kind of bubbly cinema that usually flourishes at the summertime box office. Coming off a May packed full of downbeat films just made it stand out even more. On opening night, Inside Out 2 grabbed an A Cinema score from audiences, reflecting the film's excellent word of mouth reputation. Audiences surveyed by the service Post Track, meanwhile, gave the project an encouraging average rating of 4.5 out of 5 stars. This came hot on the heels of solid reviews from professional critics, indicating to audiences that this project wasn't a case of Cars 2 all over again. Instead, Inside Out 2 rode a wave of positivity that doesn't always occur for sequels. Sometimes these titles make big bucks on opening weekend, but falter after suffering average or poor word of mouth. Just look at 2023's Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. That movie had a tremendous opening weekend, but fell off a cliff afterward thanks to dismal audience reception. Inside Out 2 didn't have the same problems that sequels such as Quantum Mania experienced. Just look at how well it held day to day over opening weekend. After an opening day of $49 million, removing $13 million in Thursday night screenings, Inside Out 2 enjoyed an increase of roughly 4%. No sudden wave of poor audience reception caused box office numbers to crash after just one day. Instead, satisfied moviegoers kept on coming out throughout the weekend. Strong marketing and the Pixar brand may have sparked audience interest in Inside Out 2, but it was the positive buzz surrounding the sequel's artistic merit that gave the movie strong legs across its opening weekend. For the last two decades, the summer movie-going season has typically begun with a Marvel Studios release, the kind of reliable box office juggernaut that draws basically everybody to the local movie theater. Avengers! Assemble. With no Marvel Studios title kicking off summer 2024, however, an immediate void appeared in the season's cinematic offerings. Initial releases in May 2024 bombed at the box office, as they apparently only appealed to older moviegoers. These movies couldn't function as all-ages crowd-pleasers, while the few younger skewing titles on offer had little pull for the grown-ups. Summer 2024 was initially defined by titles with very narrow appeal. Inside Out 2, it turned out, was the perfect replacement for a Marvel-style hit, as the movie appealed to both younger audiences and their parents. On top of that, the qualities of the original Inside Out and a healthy dash of nostalgia also intrigued Inside Out 2 older audiences and teenagers. This wasn't just a movie for one age bracket. Anyone could go and get something out of it. People have been waiting for just that kind of movie throughout the beginning of the summer. And so, Inside Out 2 seems to have come along just when everybody needed it. No wonder, then, that its opening weekend shattered all expectations.